Monaco's in New York has been setting the table for its namesake steak for nearly two centuries. The first in America, we're told, to call itself a restaurant. Delmonico's is on one historian's list of spots that have shaped our popular taste. Here's Jim Axelrod. It's noon in the kitchen of Delmonico's in Lower Manhattan. Strip medium, filet medium, burger medium. And head chef Billy Oliva is more than just today's lunch rush on his mind. It's challenging. A lot of those famous dishes that were invented here, the lobster new bird, chicken a la keen. How do we keep people and, and, and you know, grandchildren and great-grandchildren of people that used to come here, how do we keep them interested in those dishes? That's my biggest challenge here. Is to take the history and bring it forward. Delmonico's is the nation's first formal restaurant. So in many ways, this kitchen is the birthplace of what's grown into a $780 billion industry. Its influence on our nation's menus is unmistakable. Eggs Benedict, baked Alaska. This is where all the steaks start and finish. And of course, the Delmonico steak all made their name here. So when people say Delmonico steak, that's this guy. Wet age, boneless, ribeye. This Delmonico steak sold all over the country. There's only one place it carries such meaning. It's right here. And this is it. And with a history that dates back to 1837. Look, we're going to Delmonico's for supper. Won't you join us? Lunch at Delmonico's. Join me at Delmonico's on Sunday instead. Delmonico's fingerprints are on more than just our menus. Most presidents, uh, Diamond Jim Brady, uh, Vanderbilt, um, Abraham Lincoln ate here. Abraham Lincoln. Teddy Roosevelt ate here. That's right. In his new book, Yale historian Paul Friedman has come up with the 10 restaurants that changed America. Delmonico's may be on the cover. Delmonico's almost like Kleenex or Xerox became shorthand for restaurant. That's right. But all 10 make up a delicious part of our cultural history. So to understand how we go out to eat is to understand how we live, and that's to understand who we are. And how we think, how we look at the world, what sorts of things we desire, and how we distinguish ourselves as Americans. Restaurants like Mama Leone's, which integrated ethnic food into the mainstream, and the Mandarin in San Francisco, which elevated it beyond chop suey. Sylvia's in Harlem and Antoine's in New Orleans, the influence of regional cuisine. How the highbrow shaped eating out, Le Pavillon, Chez Panisse, the Four Seasons, and how the middle brow did as well, Schraff's and Howard Johnson's. On the road around the corner, here's the place to go. Howard Johnson's? The of Howard Johnson's, join the folks who know. Howard Johnson's is the basis for not only the fast food industry like McDonald's or Burger King, but the fast casual industry like Chili's or Denny's. It's going to be 6 .15. Americans now spend more money on eating out than on buying food to cook at home. And even if you never step foot in the place that started it all, don't ever forget. Your favorite neighborhood joint has a lot more in common than you might think with iconic restaurants like Delmonico's. Have you ever been somewhere else and you open up the menu and you see Lobster Newburger, you see Delmonico's steak. All the time. And do you think to yourself, that's my place? All the time. I, the, the last time that happened to me, um, I was with my mom and she told the waiter, he works where they invented that. And the waiter looked at her like, what? <laughs> you know, what are you talking about? 